Hi, welcome to the Hicks Homestead YouTube channel. So, about a week ago, on Monday, I did uh, a simulated grid down situation. So, I unplugged it from the wall and I ran a refrigerator to deep freezer on the full stack of the Pecoron E3600 LFP. And I was intending to do the test all the way through until Friday. Uh, Thursday night, I discovered that I had the uh, main battery pack had gotten down to 17%, and I really didn't want to get it any, anywhere below 17%, because um, I'm planning on using this for a long time. So the fewer cycles I can do, the longer it's going to last. I know it's rated for 3,600 cycles. And a cycle is down to 20%, so they say. Um, right now, it's uh, charged back up to the 20% uh, or 80% set point for um, being connected as a UPS. Um, something interesting that I noticed is that when we go into the battery health page... I wish it would show specifically the battery percentages, but the one battery that I have labeled one is almost completely charged. Uh, the host battery is the lowest of all of them. As you can see, there's kind of an inconsistent state of charge across the battery packs. And I don't know if that has anything to do with the way that I have these wired in on the side over here. So I have the two bottom batteries. Uh, the far one is coming into the bottom and into the charger. And I have a similar situation on the back here where the bottom one is coming in and then the top one's feeding into that. Um, the way that I have them numbered in in the menu here, I have battery zero on the bottom, battery one feeding into that, battery two, and battery three. So I don't really understand why there's such a discrepancy because zero and one are obviously higher than two and three. And the host is looking like it's sitting somewhere around a 15% or 50% state of charge. So just something interesting that I thought you guys should look into um, with your usage. Uh, right now I don't have any solar panels to hook up. Uh, that's going to come when I move to the new homestead. I'm excited about that. Matter of fact, this is probably going to be my main source of power for my RV and camper until I get a uh, power, temporary power pole and everything installed at the new place. So exciting times are ahead and I do plan on maxing this thing out with solar. As I talked about in a previous video, if you look over here on the side of these batteries, you've got your solar output right there, good for 30 amps DC. I'm sorry, not solar output, but your 12 volt DC output. And then it has this aircraft style input for your solar charging. And it's interesting, the charge rate that's there of up to 95 volts in at 400 watts. Uh, that'd be interesting to find a panel that has that high output, but only 400 watts. And... All of these have that input capability. So in addition to the front panel, where you have your, your two XT60 inputs that are good for 1200 watts each, you have this input here, which is good for your uh, 150 watt max. So that's a lot of solar power you can put into this unit. And I did confirm with Pecoron that you can indeed 
charge those battery packs along with the main unit. Maybe that's one of the reasons why the main unit is down at 50% because it's focusing on keeping the other batteries charged. I thought that the charge state would be a lot more balanced across the, the entire battery bank, but it doesn't seem to be the case. So if any of you guys out there have a little bit more experience with uh, the full stack and what your battery percentages are, uh, go ahead and leave a comment because I'd, I'd be interested in figuring out a way to optimize this without having to do a bunch of uh, trial and error. So that would be awesome if you guys had comments for that. Anyway, um, the testing did pretty good. I would have made it technically through the five days uh, duration that I was going to run the test. But like I said, I was concerned that the main unit was getting down to 17% state of charge. Uh, I did have some of the battery packs. I took screenshots of all of the battery packs at various points in the testing. But since I'm just recording stuff with my cell phone and I don't have a studio set up where I can really edit the videos and put those in, I uh, can't really share those right now. I could share them as a comment, though, I guess, if uh, you guys are really interested in seeing that. But uh, the unit did pretty good. Um, I'm satisfied with the um, grid down capability of keeping refrigerators online for four to five days without means to recharge. Uh, during Hurricane Helene, I had power down for about four days. So like I said in the very first video, had I had this setup right here, I would have been able to have my refrigerators run without having to use a generator, which would have been a pretty big deal. But even having this unit, the single head unit with the generator, I saved a lot more fuel than I would have versus running the generator all the time. So I could set this to a 50% charge rate and run my Westinghouse, as you could see in a previous video, right at idle speed and kicking out seven, 800 watts. And that charges the unit up pretty quickly depending on uh, the state of charge. So some interesting points there. Anyway, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here I'm going to complete the testing on here and get everything set back up and bring this unit back down to about 50% state of charge. And then I'm going to put it into storage uh, until I move. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.